Hi guys, I accidentally hit the go live button. So we're just here early. We're just going to chill because if I go out of here, it's going to end and we don't want that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's see. Today is, forgot, <laughs> June 8th. Yes, Tuesday, June 8th, 2021. It's 7 p.m. or it's not really 7 p.m. <laughs> it's 6.54 p.m. Central Standard Time. So we're just going to wait for our time for us to start. Uh, I will also be pulling you all up and getting things situated. All I was trying to do was put you all on the shelf. <laughs> so we'll wait just a few minutes for people to get in. Hopefully the notifications will go out. All right, let me see who's all in here early. I saw it was like six or eight people in here already when I first went to start. So let's see, we've got Quilt Gal here. Hey, how are you doing? She says, hi, T and everyone from Maryland. Got my package yesterday. The fabric, love the fabric. <laughs> all right. Robin Boyd's also saying hello to you and everyone. I also got my package kit. Hey, hey. I hope you start working on it. I started working on mine a little bit doing the Zoom on Sunday. So I'm hoping that I can finish. Uh, I got to finish these t-shirt quilts. So what I'm doing now, this is part of it, is that I'm just doing little portions as chain piecing whenever I need to not break my thread. So. Wash your hands, says, hi, everyone. I hope all is well and you're able to get a lot of sewing done. Oh, sh I should I say quilting laughing out loud. It doesn't matter. Sewing, it's sewing. Um, I know some people are real particular about which one. I, as long as you're not on a long arm or you're not quilting an actual quilt, you can say sewing. <laughs> Lynette Williams says, hey, I'm here. Yay. Hi, Lynette. And Cheryl Bing says, good evening, T and everyone. Hi, Cheryl. Judy Judy is here saying hello TNT quilters. Love the retreat video. Thank you, Judy. I appreciate that. I just wanted to give you all something because it was the first outing. I haven't been out in a, for a retreat or a quilt show since last February. So February of 2020. That was my last retreat video. So I just wanted to upload one. Um, even though I really didn't want to do a whole lot of video taping because I was just so happy to see all the people there so it's kind of got like where I, I said I'm going to come back and I didn't <laughs> but I wanted to go ahead and put that up anyway. Hi Mario he says hello from Montreal Canada good news our government will reopen the U.S. Canada border to people receiving both shots very soon so I'm wondering if they're going to be asking for um documentations, you know, looking for people's vaccination cards. Um, Sandra Adger is here. Hey, Sandy. She says, hey, everybody. It's Tuesday. Yay. Thumbs up. Thank you for the reminder. Also, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I go live or whenever I upload a video. And as Sandy said, hit the thumbs up. <laughs> Um, Vicki Lemire is here saying hello. Peggy O'Connor says, hi, TNT Quilter. Surprised to see you on Tuesday. Yeah, I had I have a conflict, hopefully temporary, on Wednesdays. And so I'm doing my lives on Tuesday instead. Jackie Kay is here, says hello, T and friends from Brentford, Canada. Thunderstorms galore, might get interrupted. So hi, Jackie, welcome back. Uh, Robin Hewitt says, hi, T. You are looking wonderful tonight. Love your quilts. Thank you so much, Robin. Uh, Maxi Doodle says, hello, everyone. Hi, T. Hello to you as well. Welcome. Barbara Pope says, hi, everyone. Glad to be here. My friend Kevin the Quilter saying, 
to Miss America. What? Oh, he's so he's just being silly. I'm not reading that. <laughs> he's saying good evening to all tea quilters. <laughs> he's just clowning like he normally is. And Vicky says, I haven't been anywhere. It's hard to walk for me. Yeah, hopefully it'll get better um, for you, uh, Vicky. I know you've been going through some things. Peggy says, the retreat video was fantastic. Thank you, Peggy. Uh, Wash your hands says, hi, T. I've been obsessed with quarter square triangle star blocks. But I can't get my points to line up. I am struggling. Never ripped out so much thread in my life for redos. Okay, I'm wondering if you, she says with quarter square triangle star blocks. And I'm wondering if you're not coming, if your quarter inch is off, either your quarter inch is off or your cutting is off. So you're going to have to double check what you should have. But the easiest thing to check is to get a ruler and make sure that you're sewing a quarter inch. And whenever you're going across something that needs to be a point, you should be stitching right into that point, like where those seam lines cross. If it's going to make a point there, you need to make sure that your thread is stitching exactly in that quarter inch spot when you're stitching across it. It's kind of hard to explain. You have to almost be doing it. I don't know if you've uh, sewn like on flying geese blocks and you have those two sides of your flying geese, and when you're stitching across to put that flying geese to the next piece of fabric, you got to make sure that you're stitching right in that ditch line of where that point is. Otherwise, you're not going to have that point. Sandy says, I love the retreat video. So the quilt that Becky was making with scrap squares, little one, do you have a pattern for that tee? No, that's her pattern. No, it's not her pattern. It's a pattern that's free online, and I do know the name of it. It's called Film at Five. So you can just Google that. I'm not sure who the creator of that pattern is, but it is called Film at Five. Joy phase, phase stands. No, strands. I'm sorry. I'm trying to separate it. Joy phrase stands. Says, hi, Tan, everyone. Says it's Phyllis G. Hi, girl. <laughs> After all of that, she's got her name down there. <laughs> Welcome back, Phyllis. Uh, Jackie says, yes, T, proof of vaccination will be required to get into Canada, she's talking about. Kevin says, I'm going to be watching mostly. I am sore, sore, sore. Stood on my head, weeding the garden all day long. Woo, yes. And uh, that's a hard job. That's why I don't have a garden. Or fancy landscaping. I love to look at it, but I don't want to keep the weeds out. Uh, Nancy Holmes says, hi, T. Nancy from Little Rock. Hi, Nancy. Welcome to the channel. Mario is also given the Facebook group. If you're interested in joining the Facebook group, make sure that you answer those three questions in order to be accepted. Otherwise, your membership will be declined. Just trying to keep out spammers, which they have been trying to get into groups now. Son and grandson came up from Wisconsin to cut my grass. That's Vicki. Uh, Nancy says, I have both my shots. Feel good. <laughs> Vanessa Brown. Hi, Vanessa. She says, hello, TNT Quilters from Rainy, Georgia. B.B. Oliver says, hi, T and Quilters. So nice to hear about the retreat. One day I want to attend. I received my multicolored T-shirt fast. Thanks. It is pretty. Blessings. You're welcome, B.B. Thank you for ordering. June Hansen's here, says, hi, Tina, everyone, I'm home, feel much better, need to stay inside since it's so hot and humidity. And I sent you a, um, a it's, it's a package, it's a greeting card, June, but I sent it as a package because I wanted to make sure it didn't get lost in the regular mail system. And I sent you an email yesterday with a tracking number. Helen Marie Carter says, hi, T and all T quilters. Hi, Helena. Uh, June says, to, she's talking to Vicki, so I skipped those. Beverly Aiken says, hello, T and T quilters. Hi, Beverly. Lynette says, yep, my one-fourth inch needed to be a scant one-fourth inch. Seam ripper is my best friend right now. Seam ripper and pins. I true understand truly. And sometimes you do need to use a scant sometimes, 
depending upon the pattern, but most times I tend to use my regular quarter in unless I'm having some, uh, I'm getting a notification about software updates up here on this iPad. So <laughs> it's like, no, not now. <laughs> so um, yeah, you have to know when, and most of the time when I use a scant, it's for smaller blocks. It's not for my regular, like, when I say regular, I'm talking about like nine inch or larger blocks, but it just depends on how many pieces are in those blocks, depending upon the design. Beth Bueller says, hello, everyone from hot and humid Oklahoma. Hello to you. Deborah Quilts is here, says, hello, T and all T quilters. And Maria Mayer also here. She says, hello, everyone. I remember this time. <laughs> hi diane 57 she's back under her name she says hi everyone my tablet is fixed yay <laughs> and kevin's also saying hey june glad you're home vivian cavi is here hi vivian she says hi t and everyone <laughs> sue is here hi sue she says hello all don't forget to like subscribe and share yes Sharon Lewis says, hi, T and Quilters. I'm glad I remember the chat on Tuesday. I love the show and tell from retreat. Thank you so much, Sharon. Um, Diane says, can't hear you, T. You all can't hear me? <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, Sean Hickman says, hello, T and T Quilters from Tyler, Texas. Uh, Angela Stringer is here. Hi, Angela. She says, hi, T and T Quilters. Hot and humid here. Uh, cool gal, your card was awesome. That was in my package. <laughs> Thank you. It depends uh, on what's going on. If somebody has something going on that I'm aware of, sometimes I will include a card if, in, in people's packages. And sometimes if somebody is sick that's shopped in my, on my online store a lot or something like that, then I would also send you, might send you a card or something like that. It just depends. If I'm aware, if I got any cards made, <laughs> you know, I try to do what I can. T, as of today, I have not gotten it, but I'm looking for it. Thank you very much. I, I think I mailed it yesterday, June. And I knew you would probably still be in the hospital. That's why I let you know and sent that tracking information. Sue says, I've been looking forward to this all day. It got me through work. <laughs> That's nice. Connie is here. Hi, Connie. She says, hello, T and all quilters. Deborah Sims Brown is here saying, hello, T and everyone from Maryland. I'm still waiting. I checked the post office today. Still haven't gotten your check. So I don't know what date you mailed it, Deborah. So um, I'll be notifying you when I get it. And uh, Stephanie is here. She says, hey, T and everyone. Uh, Sheila Willis says, good evening, T and all quilters. Hi, Sheila. C Rack says, good evening, quilting friends. Janice Miller says, hello, TNT quilters from sunny California. Damali J is here, says, hi, TNL quilters from District Heights, Maryland. A cooler 80 degrees, yes. <laughs> oh, Sandy says, I can hear well. So, okay, I'm, I, I'm wondering if Diane just needed to turn up her iPad or something. Beth says, a lot of static she's got, okay. And other people are saying they can hear me. Okay, so I don't know what's going on. Um, home Health is coming tomorrow to help me for a few weeks until I get over the hump. That's good. You're going to have some assistance. And then Stephanie is saying, now I can hear the static. It might be when I turn my head down, maybe. Okay. going to jostle you guys around just to make sure. And I wanted to make sure that the speaker was pushed in. And I can also adjust this mic position. See if this helps. Um, okay, now hopefully we'll see if this works. You all let me know if 
the uh, new positioning is working. Um, um, did I miss something? Hold on, my screen must have jumped. Let me go back. Leetta Bryant came in saying, hello, TNT Quilters. And C Rex is saying, turn your mic up a bit. Let me know if I still need to turn it up. Igna says, hello from Ingrid in Virginia Beach. Hello to you as well. And now let me go down to the bottom and see if this mic is still acting up. A lot of people are getting static in and out. Um, now it's clear. I wonder if it's your fan. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully it's much better. Maybe it was just a bad positioning of the mic and my shirt was like on top of the mic. So now it's off here to the side. So hopefully that will work. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> uh, all right, so where am I? Um, I don't have a topic of discussion for this week. And uh, that's because I, have, I am working still on these commission t-shirt quilts I've got the three quilts and I didn't even bring the music quilt back in I actually worked on it in the zoom where I worked on the borders that quilt was the most complicated quilt that I was going to do because they didn't give me any instructions so I kind of had fun with that one and I made a scrap crumb border I had bought a pack of two bags of fabric from Rita at our quilt gill and she only had 50 cents per bag. So I spent a dollar and I made so much, I made a big noodle of yardage, kind of like crumb quilting in a way. Um, but some of them did have like the full width of borders. Um, it was pretty cool. I got enough of that that I can put some probably on the back if I want to. I don't know if I'm going to be piecing the back. Or I just might save it and put it in with my crumb project or put it on the back of a future quilt somewhere else. But... I had, I kind of looked at all that fabric and I go, I feel like I got borders for days and I do. <laughs> so I probably had enough to do two more long sides of that quilt. That's how much extra stuff I had done. But I got that quilt top ready for quilting and it's just sitting right now. And then what I did was I started on the second quilt. The first quilt was a musical quilt. Um, the second quilt is baseball quilt, St. Louis Cardinals exactly. and. I started that quilt, I got the center part of that quilt put together, and I got the borders ready to be attached to that center piece. And I guess I should have changed my video title because today I started working on the hockey quilt as well, and I got a lot of the pieces cut for the hockey quilt. So I'm ready to start sewing that quilt. So I have three quilts for one customer, and they want it like lap size, but they're kind of long laps because their family is or consists of very tall people. Like a lot of them are like six two or taller. And the last thing I hate um, that I want to happen to me when I'm using a quilt like on a sofa or something as a lap quilt is for my feet to stick out. So they're pretty long. They're going to be approximately 54 inches wide by 84 inches long. And her husband, the girl that I took the order from, she's like 6'2", I used to work with her. And her husband is like 6'6". Six, six. So yeah, they're pretty tall. You need a lot. <laughs> Let me see who else has come in. Let's see. Let me go back, I've missed a lot. Oh, okay. <laughs> People were saying it's okay. Mario's giving me the thumbs up. Oh, he's telling you all to thumbs up, please. The Lois Phelps here says, hi, TNT quilters. Uh, so it was the positioning of my mic on the shirt. So sorry about that. Melinda C says, hello, T and everyone. It's better now, T. Thank you. Lisa Peggs here says, hi, Miss T and everyone. Mario say, T just received an update from United States Postal Service. The parcel is still in the U.S. 30 days today. Now, that's just terrible. I have no idea what's going on um, with the postal service. They had a package of mine that didn't have my P.O. box number on it and just holding on to it for a week and it's a priority mail package. 
So you think somebody would pay for priority mail rate and then it, it's okay for it to sit an additional week because you were, you just didn't have time to look up what my P.O. box number was. You knew I had a P.O. box there, but you didn't know the number. So a lot's going on. And when we mailing things, it's totally out of our control. And the mail system is, you know, part of the problem is that they're understaffed right now because ever since Christmas help has been laid off, they've been understaffed. Um, they can't get anybody that wants to work and they can't hire temporary employees because of union contracts. So they're between a rock and a hard place. So I do understand why some of the stuff is going on, but it's like once you touch a piece of mail, you would think that you would follow through with it no matter what. But um, we have totally lost control with the mail system during this pandemic. and. Hopefully, they're in discussions with the union on how they can fix this uh, staff shortage they got. Erling Butler's here. Welcome. She says, hi, TNT Quilters. I hope that all is well. I enjoyed the retreat video. Thank you so much. Francine says, hello, everyone. Haven't been on, but been following. Hope all is well, T. Thanks for sharing your retreat. One day I will get to one. <laughs> Maya Rayner says hello to everyone. Hi. Claudette Bettis came in, says hello to you and everyone. Hi, Claudette. Honey says it rained all day. We need the rain, but it shouldn't. It should rain all night. It only made the earth very humid. Norma says good evening, cool friends. Raining heavily in Atlanta. I guess her last name is Ozia. Uh, Lietta is talking to Kevin. Teresa McCormick says, good evening, T and all T quilters. Glad to be with you and appreciate you all. And then Erling Butler says, waiting for my package. Should have it tomorrow. Yes, I sent everything out, uh, priority mail with tracking numbers. So if you didn't get a tracking number, you know, PayPal should have sent you tracking numbers if you pay through PayPal. If you didn't pay through PayPal, you pay through a different venue, then I sent you a tracking number. And if anybody's missing a tracking number, just let me know. Kevin says, isn't that an eye-opening experience? He's talking to Lietta. <laughs> just did that myself. Tom Eckery says, hey, T and friends. Hey, Tom. Welcome to the live. Cynthia says, good evening to all from Chicago. Hope all is doing well. Hey, Cynthia. And Darlene Crosby, hello to you. She says, hello, T, and quilting friends. And Betsy Lighten is here saying, hello, all. It's a beautiful Tuesday. Uh, Betsy, your stack is growing and growing, OK? <laughs> I got all kinds of fabric I'm giving to you, girl, when I finally see you. Shirley Hickman says, don't forget Louise DeJoy when it comes to the mail delivery efficiency. Oh, I know what she's talking about. Maddie Barnum says, hi, T and everyone. <laughs> hi, Maddie. So I'm going to, um, I don't know if I should, I don't know what that is sitting on the bed of my machine. Um, I think I was going to just put the borders on the Cardinals quilt top, which over there, I guess, because it isn't over here, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's starting to, it's got the same color borders as it's got, um, same color as sashing as one of the shirts, and it started to blend in. So basically, I'm just going to be putting these borders onto this quilt top. So I've got my borders already ready to go. This is my top and bottom border. My side borders are just two pieces of fabric, this cardinal fabric and this piece here. And then when this goes across the top, it makes a little design that's gonna happen. And uh, they wanted to, um, the cardinal uniforms used to be this shade of blue, kind of like a powder blue. And they wanted this color for the, in, their, in this quilt top, remember I told you some of them, they gave me color choices and the musical one, they did not. So I got to pick the colors I wanted for the musical quilt. 
So this one, they wanted a red and they wanted this blue. So this was the only, just a solid fabric was the only fabric I had in that particular color of blue. So that's what they got, it's just a solid. And they're okay with that because I sent them photos before I got started to make sure that it was gonna be okay. So basically, I've just got the center of this quilt done with the uh, baseball fabric as the cornerstones. And then I had to build up these tiles. They've got three tiles that are also included in this quilt. So yeah, uh, very simple on these quilts. My, the musical one was a lot more complicated. That's why I got it out the way first. And uh, I just saved putting the borders on because I thought I was going to do it with you all. But then I start working on the blue quilt. And I think I'm just going to start sewing these pieces together that I've got to sew together before I can even <laughs> um, start piecing the blocks. I've got all of these little individual pieces here. Like these are part of the first border. All of these strips need to be sewn together so I can make the second border. So this is my strips for the second border. I can just put it to the side. These don't even need to be sewn. I'll put them over there. Um, these should be five by eight. I miscut them. A five by seven and a half. I cut two of them to the right size and I cut two of them wrong. So I cut these pieces so I can sew them together. So if I cut it wrong, it can definitely go back together, right? <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. Trying to see which way do they go back together. If I can line them back up, yep, right there. <laughs> so I'm gonna sew these back together. That's where I'm gonna start. <laughs> and Betsy talking about laughing out loud love it. She said, maybe I'll take another week or two. You know, every time I go through another stack of stuff, I go, okay, we'll just give this to Betsy. You've got Christmas fabrics and um, everything else. I'm not making Christmas quilts right now. So um, it's not that I didn't want the fabric. It's just that right now I'm not using it. So it's out of here. <laughs> So uh, I've been like sewing fabrics back together that I cut wrong, like on this one. On other pieces that I've been making this quilt, I have like ran out of fabric. And so I've been sewing pieces back together. So I'm doing old fashioned style quilting on these. And it's because when it's put together, you're not gonna even notice where I sewed the same fabric to itself. You won't even know it, so. Just making sure I'm utilizing all the fabric that I have. Let me go back and make sure I haven't missed any comments. Uh, Diane says they probably saw that the P.O. box missing and tossed it in a pile. Is the I ain't got time for that. Mm-hmm. Because I had asked uh, one person, the actual cashier, but it was on a day when she was the only one there. It wasn't anybody working mail pickup. And uh, yeah, the mail pickup person did it, but it was, it, they have this girl in there that's really housekeeping. And then every once in a while, I guess when other people call in, they have her working the mail pickup, but she don't know what she's doing. And then she puts stuff in places that other people are not gonna find too. Um, Sue says, looking forward to the day where you and Kevin put on a workshop together. Have you all thought about that? Not really. <laughs> Uh, not yet anyway. Lietta says, I have a lot of stuff that needs to find a new home. Let me know if you know of anyone who needs anything. That blue is pretty. Yeah, it's a, it's a common color of blue. It's just that our current uniforms, when we go into blues, is more of a royal or navy bluish, kind of in the middle of those two. So it's, so hard for me to look at powder blue, but it is a pretty color. It's very common. I think it was Channel 4 that did a piece on mail delivery in the Metro. They mailed cars the same day and it took seven days to deliver, crazy. And see, I had that problem 
when uh even before COVID, I had mailed out birthday cards to people and they were getting them like two and three months later. And that's why when I send out I sent out the last couple I sent out a couple of greeting cards this week and I sent them all um as packages because at least with packages I can track them. It's not that they're gonna be insured or anything, but at least I can track where they are. When you just do regular first class mail, you don't have any tracking at all on that. Um, you know, for us letters are concerned and stuff. So yeah, I just paid the extra money to send it. Cost me $4 uh, just to send something that could have been sent, you know, for one stamp. So yeah. <laughs> T, I have some fabric that look like batik, but the reverse side is white. Is it batik? It's a batik lookalike, and that's exactly what it is because <laughs> batik should look all. There's a we we have a two types of batiks. You have the true batiks, and then we have what we call cheap batiks. If you're paying three dollars a yard, five dollars a yard for batiks, and it's not on a sale, that's just their regular everyday price. You're probably getting some cheap batiks. They are a little bit thicker. There is a definite right and wrong side. I mean, it is very, very obvious. It's it's just thicker and coarser. It even feels rougher on the top. And then there's the regular batiks that we use. They're much smoother finish. You almost can't tell the front side to the back side on those particular batiks. I don't even care which side I sew together. I just sew the quilt together because I'm like, the only way you're gonna know which side is the right and wrong side is if you flip it yourself and see the back side. Um, otherwise, you're not going to tell. So once it's in a quilt, you can't flip it to the back side. So you're going to assume now that it's all on the right side. So that's how you tell the difference. I uh, accidentally got like a lot of that into my stash a uh, like long time ago when I didn't know the difference when I first started quilting or when batiks became more popular to use in quilting. And I've been trying to like get most of that stuff out and I make sure that I don't rebuy cheap batiks now. So I really don't like them because they're so much thicker and coarser. You know it's a cheap batik, but. Uh, my brother's here says, hi sis and everyone. I hope you all are staying safe and enjoying the weather. You got my thumbs up. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Deborah says, it's been over a week since I sent the check. Let's do another method of payment. It might come um, in a few days. We can talk about it in an email. But your first check, for some reason, it took a long time to come, too. So I don't know uh, what's up with mail from Maryland to Missouri. It's kind of crazy. Teresa Louise, I quote, too, says, hello, T and friends. Hello, Lu uh, Teresa Louise. <laughs> Kevin saying, good evening, Ray. You are such a good brother. <laughs> Lisa De La Cruz says, hi, T and everyone. Hi, Lisa. June says, T, your quilt is really nice. Thank you. Angel says, I see it. Oh, she's talking to Kevin. I see it coming. Kevin and T, road trip for electronics. <laughs> um, let's see. Do they know you at the post office? You get so much mail, they should. That's crazy. Um, like I said, this person shouldn't even have been working the door. I think people had called in, so she's not really a mail person, so this person did not know me. I just got a card that was mailed three months ago. That's from Judy. <laughs> a workshop with us, the queen and the court jester laughing out loud. Get some fabric with um, microphones on it laughing out loud. Um, and uh, Vicky's asking Kevin, will you two get any work done laughing out loud? I watched the last one was fun. We got work done. We did a lot of work. <laughs> we still work. We have a good time, but we still work. Mario says, thanks, T. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I just hope it comes soon, Mario. I don't know what the holdup is. I guess that's why they call it snail mail taking so long to get there. Yep, exactly. Okay, so these pieces are cut size. Now these are gonna be the cut size. Huh. Let's see. 
these pieces need to be sewn together because <laughs> you know how you have directional fabric? The Cardinals fabric and this hockey print is a directional print. So sometimes I have to sew fabric. Um, I have to cut my fabric for the long edge and then whatever is left, then I go ahead and put piece together for my top and bottom. So now I'm having to piece fabric here because it's directional. I thought I had four of these. <laughs> Maybe I only had three. <laughs> I think I only need three because I got to just cut 33 inches, I think. And this fabric was about 25 inches, so I've got 75 inches here to cut 66 inches of border. So that's sewn. So this is my sashing. Put it to the side. It's going on blocks. These are cornerstones. They're already sewn. And then on this quilt, they've got emblems that they are wanting me to sew into the quilt. And I thought about how I was going to do that. And I've decided to just put spacer blocks into the quilt top. So I'm going to be making a block that's just a spacer. So let me do that. And then what I'm going to do is when I get to the actual long arm machine, I will just do those then. You know, emblems are all different shapes. And I just did not feel like sewing four emblems down on this machine and having to do the, you know, lifting the presser foot, turning, lifting the presser foot, and turning. So I'm just going to freehand them on my long arm when I get to the quilting. So it'll be going through to the back, but that's okay. I'm not charging them for this service, so um, they'll take what I give them at this point <laughs> on that. So since I'm not charging them to do that work, I just decided that I would not. Uh, I wouldn't do it the way I would do it for my quilt. <laughs> Is that terrible? <laughs> Last time someone was getting rid of fabric and said, I could have some, I got kicked out of that site. <laughs> uh, people say that they're spooling, okay. I spend more time looking for these snips because I don't put them back in the right spot. <laughs> I know I'm missing a lot of comments because I'm uh, sewing. Judy Plaster says, all righty, everyone. I had to run up to my mom's to take care of everything out of her freezer in the refrigerator moved it because it quit oh my gosh yep that thing that kind of stuff happened it is not fun at all so sorry you're going through that um Rhonda Barlow's here she says hello T and everyone y'all please thumbs up 83 people watching and only 44 thumbs ups thank you Rhonda um Joyce Hernandez came in also saying hi Miss T and all hi Joyce welcome All right, so put this piece over here. So what I did was I ended up just went back and took another one of the t-shirts that was in the, um, that I, the back of a t-shirt and I, they didn't use any of the back. So I, I was gonna use cotton fabric at first to put the emblems on, but then I decided it'd be much easier and it'd have much more stability on the t-shirt material than putting it on just a plain piece of cotton. So that's why I'm piecing this t-shirt fabric. And I'm just making a space so that I can just put those in the middle as I'm quilting. 
and just stitch them down. <laughs> and all this stuff I'm sewing, I'll press it later. I'm not going to um, be on here sewing too much tonight anyway. So we should be okay with just using my wooden iron for right now, my wood press. And then I uh, didn't have a piece long enough because I'm using just scraps now to get rid of stuff. <laughs> I normally just buy sports material. And then when I need to make a quilt top or something, I just pull it and use it. So on this hockey, I don't know many people that make that does hockey. So I bought very little fabric. And so I'm just about running out of hockey except for this border print. I probably still got a yard left of that one so i am sewing it all together it's gonna get used then this way i don't have leftover scraps okay um <laughs> amelia rubio's here hi amelia she says hi miss t and everybody thank you for keeping me company while i sew Wash your hand says, I have seen the clamp. Have you? I, I have seen the clamp called third hand. It's awesome. I have it clamped on the opening of my small scissors while sewing. Helps me keep from misplacing my scissors. Okay. Francis Jackson's here saying hello. Hello to you as well. And uh, Diane says, I don't buy sports fabric. Yep. But if, you know, I, I have made quite a few t shirt quilts for people, so I know. When, when I was out with Kevin, I said, you know what, I, that girl saying she's going to give me t-shirt quilts to make, and I know knew it was going to be one of them was going to be hockey, so I just got busy. So now I got to get my piece off of here, but I don't want to cut it, so what I'm going to do is put sashing on the bottom of a block that needs one. So, hey, Peggy is here. Uh, what's this? Um... I'm trying to figure out if this St. Louis Jet shirt is um, is like an adult hockey league. Uh, the Blues was never called the Jets, is it? Or did we have a second team? Peggy should know that. Because <laughs> this is the only shirt to me that's not a blue shirt. So I was kind of confused. Is Joanne stores low end only? Someone told me they had inexpensive fabrics, but low quality. It depends. You know, you can go into Joanne's and they'll charge you more than the quilt shop won't for fabric. So I tend not to buy what they call their premium quilt fabric. So they have a they have both, but they want like fifteen dollars a yard for it. I can go to the regular quilt shop and get more up to date, prettier stuff. For cheaper, so that's what I do. Kevin says, Miss T, we will have to go back to Lickety Split for you to get more hockey fabric, laughing out loud. I don't need more hockey fabric right now. <laughs> I think I'm okay. I even found Blue's playoff fabric. I had enough to do the cornerstones in it, so I didn't have Blue's fabric to put it in the borders or the sashing, but I did find a couple of pieces where I could use it as cornerstone. So, hey, when when I'm doing, uh, like I said, I didn't charge like an extreme amount for these quilts compared to what I'm doing. So I wasn't trying to spend any additional money. So that's why I am using what I have. And if I have to piece it together, it will be pieced together. And the way that I quilt, I don't do the big old meandering stitch that you see on most t-shirt quilts, I actually still quilt them like I would a regular quilt. So when it's all quilted and put together, you'll never know it's been seen. So hopefully. <laughs> I think I know what I'm doing. And Teresa says, I love the wonky log cabin quilt you did. Thank you. I got it done. I haven't decided what I want to do for borders, so I don't have any borders on it yet. 
and it probably would just be plain, but I think I did pull fabrics, but I didn't actually put them on there. I do have them pulled. Books for Mia says, hello, Miss T and everyone. Hello to you and welcome to the channel. Maddie says, T, what did you put on the back of the t-shirts? This is, um, I use different stabilizers. Like I said, these are the cheap uh, t-shirt quilts since they were doing three. And this is just white sheer sure knit fusible SK135. 35. Again, I have a video that tells, talks about all of the t-shirt uh, that you can use on a quilt. I thought I had the other one back here, but I don't. I don't see it. No, I don't. I thought I had the other one that I really like, but there's one that's a fusible, but it looks like muslin on the other side. That's my favorite. So that's what I would use for my shirts. <laughs> um, I do use it for some customer shirts if they don't mind spending the money. But again, like I said, this was um, um, three quilts. They actually have four, but they've only given me the shirts for three. And I think that they're making gifts for their parents and stuff. So they were trying to keep their budget reasonable. So I use what they want to pay for because no matter what I pay for interfacing, I charge them the regular price because they didn't use their gas to go get it. <laughs> and uh, they didn't use their coupon to get it. I use my stuff. So I, I just make them pay regular price. They don't get the discount. So I end up making just a little bit of money on the interfacing minus my gas. I tend to buy interfacings from, um, Joann's or I order online because I can get like 30 yard bolts if Amazon has it I order sometimes from Amazon so it just depends and then what the price point is like around Christmas time you can get the interface in the cheapest you can probably get it for as much as 70 to 75 percent off at Joann's during Christmas time and then I go and buy like <laughs> two or three bolts because I know that I'm going to use it Eventually, somebody is going to want me to make them a t-shirt quilt. And it takes quite a few yards. you got to remember, this interfacing is only like 20 inches, 22 inches at the most wide. So you're going to need a lot of interfacing, a lot of yardage of interfacing. So I just buy it by the boat. I don't even waste their time with cutting for me. I buy new boats. New boats at Joann's have 15 yards on them. All right, so that's that shirt. <laughs> Cherise uh, says, hi, T. I ordered a mystery pack of fabric from Hancock's Fabric because of you. I was pleasantly surprised. Thank you for the show and tell. You are welcome. Now, see, the, Kevin, that was my fault. <laughs> but... <laughs> Me buying was your fault. <laughs> Early T, is there a pattern for the wonky log cabin and where can I find it? I put it in, I, I put a link on in the video. If you had, when that retreat video, I had a link up at the eye and I had put my Amazon store link for you all to buy the ruler and the pattern comes together as one price. So you can get it. It's, it's and if you need a link, just email me and I'll send it to you later after this. Jackie says, how do you get pictures put on fabric to include in a quilt? There is many ways you can do it. A lot of people use the June Taylor stuff that you can get at Joann's. <laughs> Isn't that terrible, the June Taylor stuff? <laughs> you already know my opinion, right? Uh, it tends to be harder, and then when you wash, I think that they a lot of the ink comes out, especially if you didn't heat set the ink in there, but eventually I feel like the June Teller sheets are not for a lot of washing, especially if you're going to put it into an actual quilt you're going to use. 
If it's going to be a wall quilt, I think it will be fine if it's not getting direct sunlight, which will affect any fabric. Um, I personally, my favorite ones are uh, two. Timeless Treasures has a nice a printable fabric as well as EQ has a nice one and they're softer. I would probably say use Timeless Treasures and you'll be guaranteed that they're gonna last a little bit longer than June Taylor. But again, remember when you're putting that kind of stuff into a quilt, it's not meant to be washed on a regular basis because it's eventually gonna wash out. It's, it's computer ink and computer ink is not permanent ink. Okay, I'll check out the video. That's Maddie. And like I and and like I said, if you can't find the links or anything, just send me an email and I'll make sure I get you what you need. It's no big deal. Francis says, T, how do you add sub subunits to paper piecing blocks? I'm having a hard <clears throat> I don't know what you mean by subunits. I don't know if you've got a paper piece block that instead of being one block by itself, it's cut into sections. Is that what you mean? Let me know if that's what you mean, June, before I answer that. Laughing out loud, Miss T, one for you, 20 for me. You got that right, Kevin. And Amelia says, uh, Miss T, I like your hair. Uh, thank you. My hair, I just washed it, so it is wet, and I couldn't do anything with it. I really wanted to put a cap on it when I came in, but I. I said, no, we'll just go ahead and let it ride. I mean, I just got through finishing my hair at 6.15. <laughs> and I, this was quick so that I could come on the live. <laughs> this is not what I would have normally done. Tom says, it all goes back to being Kevin's fault, laughing out loud. You got that right. Elaine Doucette's here. Hello, Elaine. Welcome. Sue says, doesn't matter whose fault. Glad you showed it. Very happy with my grab bag. Yes. I have to put uh, a new binding on my favorite quilt. Been using it for years, and I have noticed it's getting a little ragged. Yeah, that does happen, the edge of the quilt. <laughs> I think this is the, the Molly J. I don't know. She says, good evening. It's Oh, somebody from Philly. I don't know if they're related or if it's the same person. I'm kind of confused. So, Appy, Damali. I have no idea, June. Sorry, I couldn't help. Okay. So, I've got, I'm starting to put sashing on. So, these quilts basically go together really quick. Did somebody ask me a question about, oh, I think that was paper piecing. Francis, yes, it is a separate piece that you add within the block. So I'm thinking that both pieces are paper piece. Is that correct, Francis? One more time, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm assuming that both of the pieces that you're trying to put together are paper piece. And um, okay, yes, okay. <laughs> Normally you have an outer line that goes around the entire block that's a solid line. You don't cut on the solid line. When you're trimming your pieces up afterwards, you, you, sew, you trim on the dotted line. What I do is I use the solid lines on each end and I put a pin in the front. So let's just say that I had this B, like uh, something that I can show you, like the B down here in this word. And what I do is I put a pin right in that so that they match up. So if I'm on the back side, I may have to hold it up to light. And where those, where those black lines meet up on the edge, I don't know if you could even see this pin I got sticking through here. See how I stuck the pin in there? And then what I do is I stick that pin, which is right here <laughs> that you can't see. Uh, you see that? on the side, but you can't see it when it's straight. But I stick this pin through on the other piece at that black line. And then I, once it's on there, I just pull the pin out and leave a very little of the pin left in. And then that's when I take it and flip it and, and pull it back so that I can pin it. 
and I just hold the pieces in place and I'll do that on both ends and then sometimes in the middle there may be a match point where I put it right through that line again at the match point and then make sure that it's going straight into the match point on the other piece and that's how I make sure that the pieces are in the correct spot so when I sew them if the points have to match they're not off or, or skewed. Hopefully you understand what I'm talking about <laughs> and it's helped. <laughs> But that's a good a good question, Francis. Um, Cherie says, did anyone notice that it is hard to use Joanne's 50% off regular price item because they put everything on sale? I can't stand it. Yes, they tend to put the things that you want on sale when they do the big coupon. That's why I tend to wait around Christmas time because that's normally their best sales. So. I probably have only been in Joann's once in the past year since the pandemic. And I can't even remember what I ran out of that I had to go get from Joann's. But, yep, that's what happens. And now I need the shirt I made. <laughs> it goes onto this piece, but I also need a sashing. And this really has no right top or bottom. But let me just show you what I pieced to put the four emblems on and just, and I may have to size this up now that I think about it. I think I cut it bigger. A shirt, a took t-shirt and just interfaced it on the back. And this because it's heavier than using cotton. So since I'm not already, uh, cotton is not the most dominant fabric in a t-shirt quilt anyway. I decided instead of trying to sew an emblem onto a piece of cotton fabric that I would just go ahead and use another piece of t-shirt material because it was thicker and it also helped stabilize the emblem. Um, I think I made this a little bit bigger. I guess I can use my sashing to make sure I did that. I think I made it bigger just in case it, it drew up a little funny. I wanted to give myself like a half inch, but let's see. Yep, see my sashing is about a half inch. My t-shirt's a little bit too big, so I got to square that one up. I always give myself, I'll cut bigger instead of smaller sometimes. <laughs> um, this is on there already. So I can't do any more with this row, correct? Well, this can go onto there, but this goes onto that. <laughs> So I can't do that. So we'll just go to the second row of t-shirts. These quilts are, like I said, pretty easy quilts. They are just two rows of eight. So basically eight t-shirts and then I'm having to build up some of them. But on this blues one, I just had to make that one block. I didn't have to build the other shirts up. Um, women's shirts and like medium and small shirts, you may not can cut a 15 inch square out of them. So they sometimes will take, you have to take fabric and build them shirts up. So the musical quilt, I did a lot of building up because it was a ladies quilt. It was for one of their mothers and um, she, she's, she's uh, very thin. She was wearing small shirts. So. So yeah, I had to build those shorts up a lot. The Cardinals, the only thing I had to build up on that was the tiles. The tiles I could not cut into. Uh, 15 inches square. Dixie is here, hi Shana. Looks perfect T. <laughs> Thank you, and then I'm gonna be using this um, steam press back here to press everything afterwards but I kind of hate um, pressing for you guys because my back gets to the camera so that's why I just do all the sewing that I can do and then I do all the pressing later so I'll just sew those borders onto the cardinal quilts and then I'll be hope I think hopefully next week I'll be at my quilting stage although I got some changes coming. <laughs> I got some good changes coming for me. 
not necessarily the channel per se, but I do have some changes coming. Been in communication with somebody, so some stuff is in the mail. So I'm real excited about that. My little border pieces are trying to fall off over here. This one, oh, <laughs> you know how you have those emblems were stuck to paper. I hate when they're stuck to, they were stuck to cardboard with this sticky stuff, but when you put it on fabric and stuff, it's like it doesn't want to come out. And a piece of it got on the back of this shirt. Okay, I don't think I need one on the back of this one. Kevin says, Miss T, if you want to, if you went to Joanne's after Kevin convinced you to go to St. Clair, true value to buy more fabric last fall, laughing out loud. You went, oh yeah, I had to go for something and I couldn't remember what it was. I can't, you remember the day and everything. And it was interesting because I was on a street that I didn't know turned into Manchester, which was so weird. So yes, you have a good memory, Kevin. Francis says, yes, I wasn't using the solid line. I was just adding it to the seam allowance. Yes, you got to still line your match points up. Otherwise, it's not gonna be pretty. So, got a good memory. <laughs> Is anyone going to Try to make a salvage quilt. I've been saving some. I'm not sure if I might try to make one yet. I keep thinking about it and then I throw them away. <laughs> so uh, I haven't yet. What I have done is sometimes I will include the salvage in some of my crazy quilts though. Uh, especially if they're pretty salvages, got like a lot of color right there. It's a particular person's name. Sometimes I'll put them into my crazy quilts like that. And that's what I was thinking, uh, Peggy, thank you. Cause I'm like, and that's what, another reason why I didn't go, uh, go crazy with the blues fabric. Like I could have bought some, but I was like, no, I don't know about this Jets. <laughs> and she said, I love my blues. Got that right. How was little Miss Paige? You know, I haven't seen her since she left. What's today's day? I get her next Monday cause she's got to go to the vet. So I'll probably get her Sunday night. Plus, I work for them doing hockey season, yes. Helena says, T, what size are those half square triangles on the Ablin block swap quilt in the zapper material? Oh, they're the same size as the block. So if your blocks are nine inches, they're nine inch finished half square triangles. That's what it is. I'm like, huh? <laughs> That's great, T. You deserve good things to happen to you. I just lost my chat. So this is going to be the last two I read. Uh, uh, Deborah says, I have been thinking about making a salvage quilt, saving mine also. So I've lost my chat. So let's see if I can go back in. Nope. You know what it's going to want me to do, right? I'm going to have to reboot. <laughs> I'll go ahead and restart because there's no need in prolonging it because the chats will keep coming in and I'll just be getting further and further behind. So this one's ready. I'll just go ahead and uh, sew a couple of pieces while that boots back up. It got dull at first before it completely lost the chat. That's how I knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> like oh no and they've got the um let's win for bobby shirt um peggy
Okay. <laughs> Let me get back to the spot. Yeah, not too far. And Diane's laughing, talking about you get grand dog visitation. No, I just get to spend my money, that's all. <laughs> and the only reason I get her at night is because my daughter is past the groomers. And I, I have been getting her in the mornings, but uh, recently I just started getting her at night because it's just easier for me in the morning when I got to get up early, especially if I've been up all night sewing. So I just go get her that night. Or have my daughter bring her. Either way. And she didn't go last month because of family emergency. So uh, she's really got to go this week. Uh, Sharice says, I have to say good night, too. Please stay safe, everyone. God bless. Good night. Thank you for coming in. Ta -da. I got so much uh, fabric on my table now. <laughs> and then I'm just, you know, saving it because I would have been pressing on the press by now. But, hey, it's 8 o'clock here, so. I guess we could technically be finished. <laughs> I'll sew this last um, one together and then I'll close out with you guys. But um, all the sewing, everything I've been doing has been uh, around these t shirts. So just trying to get that done. I'm also uh, got to pull some fabric so that I can get the backings for these too. So I'm trying to get these quilted, hopefully, next week start quilting these. If nothing happens, everything goes according to plan. <laughs> we shall see. So I just wanted to sew that seam just to clear out some of my space here. <laughs> Let's see. I've got a, a darkened screen again. <laughs> kind of weird. Elaine Doucette says, nighty night, stay well and happy. Thank you, T. Thank you to you for, uh, thanks to you for coming in tonight, chatting with us. Appreciate that. So good night. Denise Ship says, hello. Denise, so hopefully you'll come back again on, we're here for an hour on Tuesdays right now. I normally do Wednesdays, but I've had a, a change in my schedule hopefully temporarily, <laughs> and um, but I do Saturday night chats too. We start at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's for the night owls, and then it also gives the people in California a chance to come into some chats that's not so late. So that's why it's later on Saturday, but I do two hours so in chat. So hopefully you can come back and chat with us then. Can we see the quilts when you finish? Yeah, you will see the quilts when I finish hopefully I'll do some sort of a video I have been doing recording I have stopped recording some stuff that I've done but I have videos from February <laughs> that I have not put together with um, all the stuff that I've done I've, I've quilted a quilt I think for Peggy quilted for uh, Dee Dee Hansen and I I don't think I finished any of my quilts, but I'll just show you what I've been working on. But because uh, things get so big, I can't show them in this room. But you will see these quilts. Um, Lizette Zayas is just coming in, says hi, T and friends watching on the TV. I received my package today, yesterday. Woohoo! Yay! I hope you like it. I'm playing a little bit with mine. I played with my uh, facet kit. That's what they're talking about. And uh, I am just using mine to chain piece whenever I need so I don't have to break my thread when I'm sewing. So, but I'm not like actively working on it per se. I'm trying to get these three quilts done. And I did go back and check my emails to see when they wanted these done. They actually said late July, early August. 
But knowing my schedule and knowing how things have been going and how I get busy all of a sudden, so I am going to continue to work on these quilts and get them done. So, yeah, I'm going to keep going. And she, uh, Lizette says, glad to hear of good things coming. Yes. It's nice when um, somebody recognizes what you're trying to do and uh, recognize that you appreciate their product. And then for them to show that same hospitality back, it's just really nice. So I'm looking forward to it. I can't share it yet, but it will be coming soon. Um, but it's really nice. June says, say good night, all kind of tired tonight. Thanks, everybody needed this tonight. Yes, yeah. so good night, June. You take care of yourself, and hopefully you have some good help coming in with your um, home uh, health care. T has had a rough year, so she didn't get as much as she wanted. <laughs> I, it's not that, you know what, I'm kind of content with, I'm kind of content in life, um, and I know some people think that think of that as a negative because you should always be trying to move upwards and forward, you know, doing things better, like eventually like hiring somebody, but I kind of like having my hands on. I like the personal feel that I have with the people that do business with me and that are in my YouTube channel. I kind of like that though. so. There's a plus and a minus to everything. If I if I was to blow up as a YouTuber, if I was to start quilting everybody's quilts, I wouldn't be doing YouTube. If my store started doing more uh, sales than what I have been doing, then I wouldn't be able to do YouTube. And I do like the YouTube community that I have. So, you know, there's a give and take. Some people are always pushing to uh, go forth and be bigger and better than what they are. I've done my job, my career job. I'm retired and I'm now able to do what I love to do and I want to continue to do what I love to do. So I don't want to get so big or have so many people that I can't continue to do the YouTube as well because I do love YouTube. And I started YouTube because of teaching, uh, because I wanted to share uh, with people you know, constant questions that I was getting asked. So I'm kind of content. It's kind of a bad thing to say for somebody that has a business, but I'm actually, is, I'm, I'm content. I just legalized my businesses for tax purposes as well as for tax, uh, sales tax reduction. <laughs> you know, I have to make it benefit me too. My new goal, retirement. I'll be real content when that happens, laughing a lot. And that's like. <laughs> 30 years and three months so that I could retire and do what I love to do, which is quilting. Uh, hi, Nora. She says, hi there, T and everybody. We're actually on our way out. So I'm going to go ahead and just end this here. Oh, I see Connie was asking, I wonder if t-shirt quilts are hard to make. Uh, no, you either love making t-shirt quilts or you hate them. Now, if you're probably quilting them on your home sewing machine, maybe just in the ditch quilting or a grid quilting would be the thing to do. Uh, that's where I think the most complicated part of t-shirt quilting, t-shirt quilt, quilt making comes in is when it comes time to quilting because you've got bulkier seams because the t-shirts are thicker. But other than that, no, they're easy to sew, they're easy to piece, they're easy to cut, they're easy to interface. So it's not a big deal to me. You either love them or you hate them, though. The Molly says, all tea, and we enjoy your wisdom and sewing knowledge. I've learned so much from you. Well, thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and end here. And uh, Diane saying good night, everybody. Stay safe and God bless. Same thing I would say. And in addition to that, Quilt out. See you all on Saturday. Bye-bye. <laughs>